Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to One Path Live. There's still a whole heap in store tonight, Sean. Yeah, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, One Path sent everyone's favourite Muslim mole into the heart of Sydney CBD to find out what the Australian public have learned about Islam. Over to you, Hilal. Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hilal Karali. You might remember me from the Mole 2013. We're here in the heart of Sydney in Hyde Park to find out what the average Australian thinks about Muslims in the media. When I say Muslim or Islam, what comes to your mind? Well, of course 9-11 comes to mind. Yeah. You can't help, but... Um, in the Middle East, um, Afghanistan, those things. Yeah, for me, I came from India, so like a biryani. I guess it's a pretty old religion from, I'm going to say the Middle East, around there. From the school that I come from, they've taught us to learn about other religions, so... Yeah, it's just another religion and a whole, and like, yeah, people part of Australia. Do you know anything about the religion itself? Not really, to be honest. Nothing at all. Is it from like Dubai and Iraq and all that sort of area? Yeah. Well, I've read quite a lot about the religion, uh, obviously, in magazines and newspapers. If I say the word Allah, do you know what that means? I've been told before, but I forget. Yeah, yeah guys, you guys have multiple like gods and deities that you... No? <laughs> there you go. I got it all wrong. Uh, he's a god too? No. Sorry, close. So he was one of the first prophets. Um, yeah. So that eight, last prophet. Last prophet. You're good, you're good. I, I, I've never studied religion. I just sort of pick it up. Uh, I don't really know. Apart from uh, it just has rules that you follow. I don't know the rules though. So. With regards to Muslims in the media, what comes to mind? Uh, with regards to media, it's all... Uh, yeah, just make up things and yeah, a few things. Maybe some stuff like in Middle East, a lot of things happening over there. Well, like in the media, there's a lot of like bad perceptions about people that are like from like from the Islam religion. But I'm not like I wouldn't be a part of those people. I don't mind like. I have no problem with it. I don't make any associations to terrorist groups, and that's kind of ridiculous to say. But I think I should say it. Um, because other people hold that opinion and, you know. I think what it is, um, you know, for those of us that have been around a long time in Australia, before there was uh, a Muslim population uh, of any note in Australia, we have seen the fabric of our society change, um, possibly in some good ways and possibly in some negative ways. If we were to ask you that there's a medium of being able to spread the word about Islam and different religions. Would you like to take that opportunity to learn about different religions and Islam? Yeah, I mean, I'm not like a huge book person, but definitely if there was something happening where people were explaining what was going on, yeah, I'd stick around and listen to it for a while, see what was it about. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm very curious about religions and about what's going on in the rest of the world. You can't judge the book but just by its cover, so you have to meet the people and talk to them, at least some, spend some time. I think, um, uh, you know, I, I think what all of us in Australia would like to see in terms of the Muslim faith is uh, the community take responsibility for all of the things that the Muslim community does, both good and bad. Thanks for that, Hilal. Um, look, there's some pretty funny answers there, but... Um, you know, 15 years ago, I probably would have been giving very similar ones. So, inshallah, there's, there's hope for us all. Now, I think we've all had those encounters at work or in our social lives. Oh, you're not like all those Muslims we see on TV. You're all right. You're not so bad. You know, and, it, and it's because all they get is this completely distorted, agenda-driven series of lazy stereotypes that don't reflect the reality at all. Um, I mean, we are, you know, technically we are all one-man me Muslim media vehicles. I, I accept that and, and we have our own part to play. But it does get frustrating at times where that's all we have. Guys? Yeah, but this Sean, Australia is a very, very large country. Mm. And we can't expect all Australians, Muslim and non-Muslims, to interact with the practicing Muslims and understand more about our religion the way we know it. All those values that you and I were brought up with, that the Muslim community was brought up with, the, uh, the recognition that there's only one God, that spiritual aspect of Islam, the being good to your neighbor, to your parents, the reading, the dhikr, and all that positive stuff, they don't get exposed to that because they only get exposed to Islam through the glosses and the weeklies and the tabloids. Look, I think that was made quite clear in what we just saw. And one of the things that I feel people are reaching out for is really where is the medium in which we can connect 
And I think this One Path Network, this Inshallah. initiative, inshallah, gives us that opportunity and that avenue to reclaim the meaning of Islam. Yeah, look, inshallah, it's going to give them a window. You know, it's a window into a life that up until now is a complete and utter mystery. You know, inshallah, that they all get a chance to see, you know, what I've had the, the absolute, you know, amazing pleasure of seeing myself, inshallah. Inshallah, and we, we can hope for the best, but it's not also daunting. I mean, Muslims worldwide have been working through different mediums and different platforms to genuinely reach out to the masses. And the advent of internet and social media has seen the rise, yes, in Islamophobic material, but at the same time, it's created an opportunity for adventurous Muslims to create Twitter accounts, to create Facebook pages, YouTube channels, and really to connect with people through the digital media, which has become the modern platform of communication. And our next guest is one such person that knows all about the power of social media. Having created YouTube videos that have inspired millions around the world, we are honored to have with us today our friend and YouTube extraordinaire, Kamal Saleh. Kamal Saleh is a young Muslim YouTuber hailing from Sydney's West. Starting off in 2012, he released his first Islamic spoken word video which gained the attention of millions around the world. What are we doing here? And where are we gonna go? Kamal continues to produce thought-provoking videos that captivate the hearts of non-Muslims and Muslims alike. A man who is passionate about the media and its potential in propelling the da'wah. Brothers and sisters, please give a warm welcome for Brother Kamal Saleh. And welcome, Kamal. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're very honored to have you here today. It's great to be here. I'm very excited. Alhamdulillah. Look, let's get straight into it. The question everyone wants to know how did all this begin? Oh, that takes me back about two years ago at the beginning of 2012. I was sitting in a social media lecture at Macquarie University, and the lecturer was talking about the importance of contributing to society. Whatever your culture is, whatever your faith is, whatever background you come from, it's important to contribute to society. So I went ahead and done a quick experiment while in my lecture. I jumped on YouTube and I wrote the words religion into the search bar. I was expecting to see at least one Islamic video on the front page after searching this term. To my surprise, there was nothing. Matter of fact, there was a Christian video which had gained over 10 million views within a week teaching people about Jesus. So I said, my first task is to respond to this video and let the world know who Jesus truly was. And Alhamdulillah, through the will of Allah, I was successful. Uh, Kamal, I have got a confession to make. I live in Qatar at the moment, and any time I want to get any credibility, when people notice my Australian accent, they always ask me if I know you. And to get any credibility, I bring up my phone, I put you on speed dial even though I don't call you, just to show that I know you. But all like in all seriousness, across the Middle East, I've had a number of people come up to me and ask me if I know you and how can they access more of your videos. So that just goes to show how much and how far your videos have reached. So tell us more about the reach that you can get online. Uh, through the will of Allah, our potential reach is unlimited. Wallahi, the amount of non-Muslims that have been viewing my content, commenting, saying, oh my God, I never knew this about Islam. You taught me so much about Islam. It is unbelievable how much people you can reach. To the extent that we've, ate, we've actually been able to reach celebrities. Like you guys probably won't believe this, but just about two weeks ago, the former world heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis, he retweeted one of our videos and he said, I'm not a Muslim, but you have to check out this video. We had Tyrese Gibson. Now, we ask Allah to guide these people. He shared the video. He wrote, this just gave me life. And these results are phenomenal, only through the will of Allah, of course. But most importantly, it's the Muslims that I care about the most. The amount of messages I receive from Muslims that tell me, you know, I was born a Muslim, raised a Muslim, but I slowly became an agnostic. I became an atheist. I, I fell out of touch with my religion. But after coming across your video, I believed again. Wallahi, it's only through Allah, but subhanAllah. It's really amazing. Um, here's a question for you, uh, Kamal. Uh, who are your heroes? Heroes? Yeah. Uh, um, heroes. I would have to say um, Abdullah bin Rawaha, one of the radiallahu anhu, one of the Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who also happened to be a poet. And I actually had the privilege of visiting one of the sites where he recited poetry. It was the Battle of Mu'ta, and he looked upon two hundred thousand soldiers, the enemy, and he recited the poetic lines: "Why do we flee from that which we are chasing?" So he just showed, I'm not scared, through his poetic lines, and he just lifted up the himma of the Muslims around him, subhanAllah. All right, Mr. YouTube extraordinaire, 
Uh, Lennox Lewis has given you the big tick, so has Tyrese. Let's see how you measure up in front of the Australian Muslim audience. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, and the next answer has to be done in spoken word. Come on, man. Are you ready for that? I think, look, you're, you're up for it, inshallah. It's going to be a simple question, but you've got to answer it in spoken word. Why would anyone even bother supporting a project like One Path? Come on. I don't freestyle. Dude. But we've been waiting a while. <laughs> and I think it's time to teach the world that it's sunnah to smile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Even when you're not trying, subhanAllah. <laughs> All right. Uh, look, you know, um, I've actually got a little bit of talent in this space myself. Um, I might not have 10 bajillion hits on YouTube, but, but check this out. There was a young man named Kamal, whose poems were far from banal. But compared to McNulty, his poems were faulty. That lovely young man named Kamal. <laughs> um, do we have any tumbleweed effect? No? Okay. Oh, Radio, well. ladies and gentlemen, Zakhla <laughs> Ter, uh, yeah, yeah, Sean please. and uh, Kamal. Uh, some classics already on Australia's first Muslim media network. Still a lot coming up on One Path Live. Don't go anywhere. Up next on One Path Live, Sheikh Abu Bakr Zaud. Still to come, Sean McNulty's cooking show, Brother Malaz Majani. Don't go away. For Taylor Small Goods and Wholesale Meat Supplies, provide the very best in quality meat products and hand-slaughtered chicken. With a versatile range of meat products, For Taylor has been offering quality halal meat for over 20 years to Australian families, restaurants, airline catering companies and major retailers. All stock is carefully managed to ensure that it is the best of quality and adheres to the highest standard of halal certification. For Taylor, available at reputable halal butchers and select Coles supermarkets. 1300 Halal.